fugitives who deserve 15 seconds of shame. A jury in Florida convicted Juan Antonio Garcia molesting a young girl. But a judge made the mistake of letting him stay free until he was sentenced. And he ran off. He may be hiding in Texas or Mexico. Police say Lauren Cheek stormed onto a transit bus in Newark, New Jersey and shot a passenger to death. Cheek has ties to the Blood Street Gang. He may be hiding in Virginia, North Carolina, or Pennsylvania. Cops say Warren Back robbed a bank in Cincinnati at gunpoint. Back has a tattoo on his abdomen that reads Caucasian Kingpin. He's known to hang out at casinos and may be hiding in Indiana, Ohio, or Illinois. Police in Lowell, Massachusetts say Daniel Keo Kung, a member of a street crew called the Tiny Rascals, shot a man to death. He has several tattoos, including the word rascals on his back. He could be in California. Now that they've had their 15 seconds of shame, you know what to do. If you've seen any of these fugitives, call our hotline at 1-800-CRIME-TV. If something really tragic happens to you, do you know how you'd react? Well, as someone who's been through it, believe me, nothing prepares you for it. You can't predict how it'll affect you and your family. It can bring you closer together, or it can tear you apart. Up next, Rick Siegel has the story of a family who was hit with some terrible news and how it spurred them to action. Tuolumne County, California, near Yosemite National Park, is known for its spectacular scenery. But trapped amid the beauty is a family's tragic story. Sure, don't go nowhere. Pete Mayo and his three sisters never thought they'd have to become experts on search and rescue, criminal investigation, and publicity. But ever since their mother disappeared last August, their lives have been transformed. In fact, for them, normal life has completely disappeared, just like their mother. It's been pure hell since August the 9th when we found out. And we just, we've, we've done everything we know to do, but we're still learning different things. Their mother, 64-year-old Nita Mayo, left her home in Hawthorne, Nevada on August 8th for a solo day trip into the Sierra Nevada mountains. The next day, Nita didn't show up for work at her nursing job. And two days later, cops made a puzzling discovery along the steep and winding Sonora Pass. Patrol deputies discovered her car at the Don El Vista Point. There were items in the car that made it appear like somebody was just going on a trip and parked a car there, intending to come back within just a few minutes. This is that point, Don El Vista, where Nita Mayo supposedly came with her camera to take a picture. Now, going on the theory that she might have fallen over the edge, they've done comprehensive searches of this area. And as you can tell, that is a monumental task. It's a thousand feet all the way to the bottom of that canyon. They used helicopters, sniffing dogs, rock climbers rappelling over the edge. Even Marines from the Mountain Warfare Training Base nearby have gone into the canyon. And the Sheriff's Office is so confident of their searches, they say Nita Mayo is nowhere within a two-mile radius of this point. Nita's children refused to give up. They left their lives back in Oklahoma, Tennessee, and North Dakota and made the search for Nita their full-time jobs. We thought, yeah, you know, we're going to find her in a couple of days. And those days turned into day 16. I can completely remember looking at my sister going, day 16. The Mayo family also did some detective work, and they found some promising leads, like a family who was near the Vista Point on the very day Nita Mayo disappeared. It was a family from South uh, L.A. They, they was leaving here, and a man come out of the bushes, and he looked real rough and, and sweating, and it scared them. What was he saying? 
He was screaming and hollering, come here, come here, let me show you, come, I got, I got to show you this, come quick, you know, and, and they, uh, it just scared them so much, they, they run out of there. It sounded like a promising lead, but this mystery man was never seen again. The family now pinned their hopes on the forensic processing of Nita's car. Surely that would reveal something. You can see on the seat that there's print powder that's been dropped there. They found nothing really remarkable about the car. She's my mother. She's the most wonderful woman in the world. And that's probably what got her in trouble. And hope to God that's what get her out. With no clues after two months, the vast beauty of the Sierras gave way to vast helplessness felt by Nita's family. The winter snows were just weeks away and the mountain pass would soon close, making searches impossible. We need every good day we can get right now. The weather's coming in, there'll be 10, 12 feet of snow up here. Nita's children appealed to volunteers to join them for another big search before winter. One group right now, a group or two, that are walking this area, and then they're going to go walk this area. I think two people covering this whole area is not enough. No. So. Tracy Mayo ran the command center at a mountain lodge. Pete Mayo coordinated the search in the field. It'd be a lot better for the horses to get off in there than the four-wheelers. We'll hit roads like this. People came on foot with ATVs, motorcycles, horses, and dogs to help search the canyon. I've heard over and over, you know, when people are getting ready to go search, look for the, the buzzards flying overhead, look for those. And when you break that down, that's... That's sad. That's your mom out there. How long are you guys going to stay out here doing this? Till we find her. Somebody, one of us, will always be out here. But at the end of the search, the family is left without answers, and Nita Mayo remains a missing person. We cannot prove one way or the other that it was foul play. Uh, we can't prove that there wasn't. And that big question mark is probably what makes this the hardest case that I've ever dealt with. It's also the hardest thing the Mayo family has ever dealt with. As the snow falls, three months turn to four, and the holidays come and go. We didn't give up our hope, or we didn't give up our search, but it, it had to be pushed back a little bit during those times for survival. It honestly did. You, you're trying to justify to me. I know, I'm trying, because those were hard. That's why, those, that's why those months were so hard. You felt guilty for mm -hmm. checking back into your own life. Yep, yep, absolutely. Six months is a long time to be without your mom when you, you, you talk to You're used to having her there every day, and it's yeah. not something that you were expecting. She's just, one day you talk to her, and then she's just gone the next. Yeah. Get them strips out. Pete Mayo's top priority is finding his mother, but he also needs to make a living. And as a small contractor in the construction business, when he doesn't work, he doesn't get paid. Three, four months, you know, with no work, it's just, it, it runs you dry, and it's been hard on, on my wife and kids. I just can't look into the future until I get this settled, till we find Mom. Mr. Warner, shall we? It's been months since their mother went missing. How you doing, Cindy? Good. Pete, Cindy, and Shelley returned to Sonora, California to meet with sheriff's investigators. At this point, you can see we've done quite a bit of work. We're coming to a point, though, where we don't have a whole lot of leads to follow up on. Uh, All right. We don't know where to go. We don't know what happened. It's like she just disappeared off the face of the earth. The Mayo family decides their only hope now is to appeal to the public, not just in Tuolumne County, but across America. Tracy Mayo mounts a relentless media campaign. Holy cow. Beginning in New York City. 
Yeah, they don't have buildings like that in Fargo. <laughs> no? No. This morning, she'll do her very first network interview in a live appearance on the CBS Early Show. Just relax and just chat. That's all you're going to do out there, okay? Mm -hmm. And joining us now is one of Nina Mayo's daughters, Tracy Mayo. It's been very, very tough for you and your siblings, right? Yep. It's been a long five and a half months, and we are still so desperate to get her back. And her birthday's coming up. We're going to hold a, an across-the-nation prayer vigil. We believe in the power of prayer, and we're going to have a focused prayer that day. My next prayer, Lord, is that if for some reason you have taken her to be with you, that you will somehow let us know. There's only one way Nita Mayo's family can get their lives back. They desperately need to know what happened to their mother. If you know anything at all about the disappearance of Nita Mayo, please call us tonight at 1-800-CRIME-TV. First of all, our prayers go out to Nita's family. God bless them. Now the ice and snow has finally melted along the Sonora Pass. And just today, the search for Nita Mayo began again. And of course, we pray that she's well and far away from the mountains. Now here are some clues if you've seen her. Nita Mayo was born in Great Britain and has a British accent. She also needs her glasses. Her regular pair was found in her car, but her prescription sunglasses, along with her camera, have not been found and are believed to be with her. The Niter family is waiting for your tips. If you can help, please call our hotline tonight and tell us what you know. Now stay with us. We'll be right back. Up next, he didn't have to do this. He was just four days away from being released. And when he ran into a cop, he didn't have to do this. He would use any means necessary to try to avoid capture, and shooting a trooper was one of them. 